Hello everyone. Welcome back to our online class. Last class we discussed the story this Jodi's phone. We discussed part 1 and part 2. So today we are going to check the next part. Part 3 we are going to check. Okay, so we know that Jodi, Jodi's father was bitten by a snake and he killed a doe and took the heart and the liver to take out the poison and Jodi was thinking about the phone which left behind then he asked permission from his father and went to with the mill wheel he went to the forest where he had seen the phone last time and when he reached there he searched for it but he couldn't see anything there was no trace of that phone okay now we are going to check the third part so here we are reading the third part part three movement directly in front of him startled him so that he tumbled backward so suddenly some in front of him we know he was searching in between the bushes. He was kneeling down. He was knelt down and searching. Suddenly some movement in front of him startled, confused, frightened him. And he jumped backward. The phone lifted its face to his. So the phone was there. It turned its head with a wide wandering motion and shook him through the through with the stare of its liquid eyes. Liquid eyes. It was quivering. Liquid ice here means it's wet ice. It was quivering, shaking slightly. It made no effort to rise or run. Jody could not trust himself to move. So he met the phone there. He whispered, It's me. The phone lifted its nose, sending him. Sending means here, smelling. He reached out one hand and laid it on the soft neck. The touch made him Delirious. Delirious means extremely excited. He moved forward on all fours. We know he was kneeling down until he was close beside it. He put his arms around its body. A light convulsion passed over it, but it did not stir. Convulsion means shiver. Stir here means move. Did not move. He stroked its sides as gently as though the phone were a china deer and he might break it so he just slowly stroked on its body china deer a clay deer that is easily broken china deer means a clay deer its skin was very soft it was sleek and clean had a sweat sorry sweet scent of grass sleek means smooth and shiny sleek smooth and shiny he rose slowly and lifted the phone from the ground so he was kneeling down he slowly rise lifted it from there and he took the phone in his arms his legs hung limbily limbily means it can't move some pain or something happened to the leg they were surprisingly long and he had to hoist the phone as high as possible under his arm hoist means pull pull up higher pull up higher that is hoist so he wanted to the legs are very long so he wanted to keep it high as much height as possible he was afraid that it might kick and bleed at the sight and smell of its mother so he thought it may be bleat means that cry crying sound bleat so he thought it may be kick him when he get the mother smell he scattered the clearing and pushed his way into the thicket. Here, thicket here means that bushes. It was difficult to fight through with his burden. Burden here means it was he was carrying. You can see the picture. He was carrying the phone in his arms and he is moving in between that thick bushes. The phone's legs caught in the bushes and he could not lift his own with freedom. So because of that 
the he can't move his own legs because the fawn's leg also stuck in between that bushes it's very difficult to move he tried to shield its face from prickling vines prickling vines here means that uh, small small plants which has thorns on it its head bobbed with his pride his heart thumped with the marvel of his acceptance of him so his heart was thumping because he understood that he was happy marvel happy because the fawn accepted him he reached the trail and walked as fast as he could until he came to the intersection with the road home he stopped to rest and set the fawn down on its dangling legs it wavered on them it looked at him and bleated bleating means that make that noise he said enchanted i will carry you after i get my breath i will carry you when i get some breath he remembered his father saying that a fawn would follow if it had first been carried so remember a fawn will follow if it first if somebody carried it then that fawn will follow the person he started away slowly the fawn stared after him he came back to it and stroked it and walked away again it took a few wobbling steps toward him and cried piteously so is some steps he moved forward then slow steps it was wobbling means slow steps then it started crying piteously piteously means sympathetically it was willing to follow him it belonged to him it was his own he was his wa he was light headed with his joy light headed means unable to think clearly he wanted to fondle it to run and romp with it to call call to it to come to him so romp here means to play so he understood that the phone was his own it is with him now he can he wanted to uh, what's a love it fondle it he wanted to uh, run with it he wanted to play with it he can't think clearly because he don't know he was very happy there he dared not alarm it alarm means frighten you know not to fear him he picked it up and carried it in front of him over his two arms it seemed to him that he walked without effort so now he carried the phone and walked his arms began to ache and he was forced to stop again now his arms began to ache pain then stopped again when he walked on the phone allowed followed him at once then when he walked on the phone followed again he allowed it to walk a little distance then picked it up again the distance home was nothing he could have walked all day and into the night carrying it and watching it follow he was wet with sweat but a light breeze blew through the june morning cooling him the sky was as clear as spring water in a blue china cup he came to the clearing it was fresh and green after the night's rain he fumbled with the with the latch and was finally obliged to set down the phone to manage it so he was going home with that phone then he had an idea he would walk into the house into penny's bedroom with the phone walking behind him he thought he will walk into the penny means father father's room and the phone will follow him but at the steps the phone backed and refused to climb them backed means unwilling to do something unwilling to climb them he picked it up and went to his father penny lay with closed eyes jody called pa look penny turned his head jody stood beside him the phone clutched hard against him it seemed to penny that the boy's eyes were as bright as the phone's he said i'm glad you found him jody then went to the kitchen the phone wobbled after him more slowly wobbled a pan of morning's milk stood in the kitchen safe the cream had risen on it the, he skimmed the cream into a jug he poured milk into a small gourd he held it out to the phone it butted it suddenly smelling the milk 
he saved it precariously from spilling over the spilling over the floor it could make nothing of the milk in the ground so he was he wanted to give that milk to the animal fawn he dipped his fingers into the milk and thrust them into the fawn soft wet mouth it sucked greedily when he withdrew them it bleated frantically and butted him so frantically fearfully then he is wanted to eat that milk drink that milk he dipped his fingers again and that the fawn sucked he lowered them slowly into the milk the fawn blew and sucked and is snorted it is stamped its no small hoofs impatiently as long as he held his finger below the level of the milk the fawn was content it closed its eyes dreamily it was ecstasy to feel its tongue against his hand its small tail flicked back and forth the last of the milk vanished in a swirl of foam and gurgling so now jody found the fawn and he bring the fawn home and happily he was feeding the fawn the milk it did can't drink the milk so what he did he dipped the finger in his in the milk and kept it into the mouth of that fawn you can see in this picture look the fawn was sucking the sucking and licking the finger of that boy so i hope you understood the story here it's very wonderful story it was written by majori kinan rollings mk rollings so if you have any doubts about the story you can ask it in the comment box after watching this video you should read the story completely then you have the comprehension check and work with the text and some other grammatical works are there so that all we'll do in the next class okay so let's wind up today's class thank you for watching have a nice day see you later bye